The Medieval Plant Survey is a privately funded interactive online software dedicated to, broadly speaking, the cultural research of medieval plants. This is the research of a plant's law and its cultural characteristics. It is based on the findings of various disciplines. It includes not only plant name studies, but also research of medical and pharmaceutical information, the evaluation of a plant's symbolic meaning, also digesting archaeological findings, as well as facts concerning economical history. Additionally, plant studies may concern art history, botany, classical philology, folklore studies, history of handcrafts, literary studies and theology. In short, this kind of research is dependent on interdisciplinary research efforts and based on the character of plant law dissemination, this research has to be conducted on an international basis. In my presentation, I want to show you how we approach this problem. This we I will be referring to includes my colleague Roman Weinberger, who is the technical mastermind behind this project, and myself, who takes care of editorial and research tasks. First, I want to summarize the problem and the special circumstances of medieval plant studies. Based on this information, I can outline the guidelines we set up for our project. Then, I will give you a quick walkthrough of the software solution we chose based on our special requirements. Next, I want to give a short overview of the available contents and the general status of the project. And I will conclude my presentation with an outlook on the planned work and future add-ons. For being able to explain the circumstances of medieval plant studies, I will have to take you back to the Middle Ages for a quick assessment. In this time, plants and the law were an active part of everyday life. Plants were used as food, as medicine, but also as symbols for religious messages. Medieval men, women and even children had an active store of knowledge to decode the relevant information based on the context a plant appeared in. In short, knowledge about plants was general knowledge. The modern scholar who is working with medieval plants has to cope with several disadvantages. For us, medieval society and culture are as strange and mysterious as, for example, Asian cultures. In our daily life, plants have long moved from the center of interest. What is more is that historical plant studies cover more than one field of research. This means that plant researchers have to travel scholarly borderlands. Scholars researching medieval plants should command a well-founded knowledge in several fields of research. One could say that studying medieval plants looks like the task for a polymath. Our educational system breeds highly specialized experts who are often unable to cope with the tasks at hand. This is the reason why the study of medieval plants was either ne neglected over the recent years or, which is much worse, produced unsatisfactory or even wrong results. Not being a polymath either, I was searching for an adequate solution to a problem, the strategic, strategic situation of which is not very encouraging. Medieval plant studies involve the expertise of various disciplines with diverse research methods. At the same time, each expert involved has his or her own very individual needs, expectation, wishes and research goals that should be taken care of. While working with Roman Weinberger on the Dictionary of Old English Plant Names, I did not only get an intimate look at historical plant name studies, but we repeatedly discussed the problems I just outlined. While the dictionary had no room for any solution that was more ambitious than the simple presentation of research data, we decided to start this very little project, the Medieval Plant Survey. We were well aware that we started off on an undertaking, the end of which we didn't know then, and probably we do not know it now. Anyway, we set out with distinct research goals that have not changed over the time, but have even become more set. With the help of our online software, we want to be able to illustrate the diachronic evolution of a plant, its name and its law in a distinct language area. 
At the same time, we want to illustrate the synchronic evolution of a plant in different language areas at a given time. The overall goal of this research have to be interactive plant monographs that incorporate and interpret all available source materials and research data. Based on the research situation I have outlined earlier, our demands on the software were as follows. It has to be a software that is, that it, that is easy to use for inexperienced computer users. We are looking for a very low entry level to attract as many users as possible. At the same time, it should not bore computer experts. It should be fit for interdisciplinary research and online collaboration. It has to provide means for networking and communication. Concerning the data we were going to accumulate, the software should provide a solid data model as well as the possibilities for, for flexible data exchange. Having to keep costs down, we concentrated on using open standards and open source software. In the end, we decided to base our project on a WordPress multi-site installation that is based on PHP software and a relational SQL database. WordPress is open source software and offers a content management system and a blogging system. It has a lean core that can be extended with a broad range of flexible and usability tested interface component components. But most importantly, it is backed by an alert and active developer community. Besides being a stable software that only needs minimal maintenance, which is available through an automated update system, the online software is very powerful even out of the box. It offers the administration of structured as well as unstructured content and of media data. It has a role-based user management system, which, as I will explain later, is an important feature for our project. Other features we rely on are the flexible template system, the search engine optimized display of content and the communication features the software has to offer. We also make use of the software's rather flexible extension system which made it possible to add project specific uh, data model as well as a broad range of import and export features which allows for the integration of external software solutions. The software's layout, the fact that it, that it has a split display of public and administrative area, makes it possible to build a rather complex collaboration scenario with distinct user features in both front and back end. <laughs>